our system is broken, it doesn't mean that it's wrong, it just needs healing. As we heal ourselves, we're able to heal the planet. And so my dream is really to be able to have a movement that comes from the energy of love. We give thanks to the heart of the sky. Le damos gracias al corazón del cielo. We give thanks to the heart of the earth. Le damos gracias al corazón de la tierra. We give thanks to the heart of the water. Le damos gracias al corazón del agua. We give thanks to the heart of the fire. Le damos gracias al corazón del fuego. We give thanks to all four winds that we breathe. Le damos gracias a los cuatro vientos que respiramos. We give thanks to the light within. Le damos gracias a nuestra luz interior. Thank you to the spirit of cacao. Thank you for allowing us to dissolve all those barriers that we have set against ourselves so we can remember the language of the heart and begin to listen, but also speak from that space. And thank you to Nana Marina and Tata Pedro and all the elders, all the ancestors that have passed on this wisdom from generation to generation. On a physical level, cacao is really preparing us for a spiritual experience. And what that means, spirituality is a communication with the Creator, with the Source, and also with this Earth. So on a physical level, cacao is opening up our blood vessels, it gets the blood stimulated, so you feel all this natural energy, but it's also relaxing the muscles, the joints, the nervous system. So it creates such a beautiful duality of being awake, but then also really relaxed. And that allows us to better understand what is the message that this plant is bringing. All these plants are really there to assist us in the understanding of the communication with this earth. And so cacao is a representation of love. It's that motherly energy that really supports us through the process. So it's not a psychoactive plant that's going to take you away, but it's actually bringing you closer to home. And in the Mayan Cosmovision, they really understand that all of us come here with a calling, with a purpose. And when we create these spaces for us to listen and be heard, then we can really understand what our purpose is in the here and now. And then we can start walking and taking that action. So we're gathering together from different communities, from different backgrounds, to honor and invoke the Amazon, to pray for this healing, and also pray for our own healing. As we heal ourselves, we're able to heal the planet. Our future generations are important to us. If we don't take charge of our future generations and clean up for them, they're gonna have a drastic time in their time. I'm here as a keeper of peace keeper of waters and a worshiper and blesser of winds. We have to take care of our four seasons and learn from them. Every day she is calling for us. Every day she is speaking to us. We may not hear it in words, but we hear Mother Nature when she shakes her skirt. The area that we gathered is where, you know, the 9-11 towers came crashing down and we gather around a tree. It was the only tree that survived those attacks, which, you know, is symbolic of how we are going to survive this climate challenge that we are in and we're going to rise and we're going to overcome it and we're going to come together as a species. And that was kind of a, the goal is to show this in a micro way what we're going to do globally in this next decade. And so my perspective is that the Oculus World Trade Center, which is this building actually modeled after a dove of peace is the heartbeat of human activity on our planet. And so we did this to the heart. So we tried to really bring healing to the heart 
of really humanity and Earth at the same time. I think the biggest thing we're missing is unity and as I said, todos unidos. We need to understand that we are truly one. We have been conditioned out of being ourselves and we need to understand that the most important thing that we have on this earth is each other. Once that message is understood, then I think we can move forward on other issues. We don't destroy ourselves because we're not destroying Mother Earth. Mother Earth will still be here, but we're long gone. The ones that we're destroying is ourselves. We'll leave nothing for our children if we keep on going the way we are. You can see it constantly. A hurricane comes, destroys everything. Uh, earthquake comes, destroys everything. And it just regenerates, the earth regenerates. But uh, we are the ones that are gonna suffer. We're the ones that are gonna be extinct. The burning of our forests is part of the monetary racism, the capitalist system. Amen. Racism in the money. Because I guarantee you, if we were a bit smarter on our spending, on our funding, on our supporting, we wouldn't have these problems. Those Native Americans, those Native on the Amazon forests would, would be well armed and well fortified against the government. But we're too busy producing and consuming, producing and consuming, producing and consuming and mainly consuming 75% of the things that we don't need in our lives. I want to live. I want my children to live. I, I want my children to enjoy the planet. And um, I want my people to understand that when the climate changes, right? We're in the middle of a crisis. When everything changes, these oppressors have us living in areas that will be more devastated than other places. You look at Louisiana, you look at flooding in Florida as well as Virginia, it's black communities that will be hit the hardest. It's impoverished communities that will be hit the hardest. We'll suffer and we're not in a position to um, help ourselves. That's scary. Our earth right now is going through a process of inflammation. Just when we get sick, all of the energy gathers in one space to heal us. And this is the earth letting us know she's sick. And she's not needing us to do so much. What she's asking for is a space to breathe. If you think about where this is happening, this is the lungs of our planet. That's our breath. So the moment that we create space for her to breathe, and the moment that we create for ourselves to breathe, then the earth can heal on its own. We're all brothers and sisters, and we're here to unite under this big umbrella. Listen to your dreams. Listen to those small whispers inside of you when it tells you something ain't right in your environment. Listen to your children. Above all, listen to your children. May the cosmic force and great Maka, great grandmother beneath our feet, guide us in our endeavor. The Amazon has to be saved. Our lungs need air. Metakuya, Washington.